Alright, if you would, turn with me to Acts chapter 18. We're going to look at five verses today. Uh, we're going to look at verses 24 through 38 in a sermon that I've entitled, Half-Truths and Outright Lies. And um, as I was thinking about this particular passage this week, I thought about... Um, the half churches and outright lies that we face on a consistent basis. And as I thought about that, I thought about um, how in our culture, we are a commodities culture. And I was thinking about what was the rarest of all commodities. I thought, well, maybe it's time, because nobody ever seems to have enough time. And I thought, no, that's not it. Maybe it's natural resources. I mean, we fight wars over natural resources. But no, that's not it either. Maybe it's money. But I don't think that's it either. I think for us, the rarest of all um, commodities is true. Because you face so many half-truths and outright lies on a daily basis that when you hear the truth, it's just exceptional. I think about some of those half-truths and outright lies that people believe. I did some internet research this week. You realize that there are 80% of the American population believes that the American government is withholding evidence of alien contact. 80%. You realize that over 50% of the American public believes that Bigfoot Rome's this area. You realize that 40% of the American population believes that Darwinian evolution is the answer to our origins. Half-truths and outright lies. And we see it in the political realm as well. We're, we are a country that is $15 trillion in debt. And the answer from both sides is spend our way out of debt. Half truth, half right lie. But that would be bad enough if it was just coming from a culture that's inundated with half truths and outright lies. But the church has been infected by half truths and outright lies. Uh, three lies in particular that I want to talk to you about today. Uh, those three are knowing Jesus is the same, or knowing about Jesus is the same as knowing Jesus. The second one is going to church means that you are a Christian. And the last one, ministry is for the professionals only. These are half-truths and outright lies that have infiltrated and infected the church in such a way that in some instances, if Jesus returned, I wonder sometimes if he would even recognize this body that he created. And this is not just the case in the 21st century. We see that in the 1st century. And we see that in a man named Apollos. We see a man named Apollos who was very passionate about what he believed. But what he believed was a half-truth which led him, and as it would lead all of us, we follow it all the way out into an outright lie. So if you would, look at verse 24. I'm going to begin reading there and go through 28. And the Word of God says this, Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man. Uh, with a thorough knowledge of the scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he only knew the baptism of John. He began speaking boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him into their home, and he explained to them the way of God more adequately. When Apollos Wanted to go to Achaia, the brothers encouraged him and wrote to the disciples there to welcome him. On arriving, 
he was a great help to those who, by grace, that had believed. For he vigorously refuted the Jews in public debate, proving from the scriptures that Jesus was the Christ. Let's pray. Father, may the meditations of my heart and the words of my mouth be pleasing in your sight. Lord, great God and Redeemer. It's in Jesus' beautiful name I pray. Amen. You see, Apollos was a man who uh, sincerely desired to seek the living God. He was a, a man from Alexandria, a man, uh, a man from a city who was known for its great knowledge and wisdom. And the scripture tells us that he was a man who was thoroughly brought up and understood the scriptures. Yet he only had half the truth. And he acted upon it. He only knew the story of Jesus as far as it went to John's baptism. You remember the story where Jesus is baptized in the river by John. And that was an incredible part of the gospel narrative where the Son of God comes and uh, John the Baptist declares Him as the Lamb of God. And He is baptized in the water, not for His sin, but for ours. And raised. And when He is raised up out of the water, they hear the voice from heaven, the, 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 the words of God the Father, this is my Son. And then they see the sin upon Him, the Holy Spirit. So we have this beautiful and amazing picture of the Trinity. But that's all that Apollos understood. And because that's all he understood, because he didn't have the whole story, I see Apollos engaged in this tug of war. This tug of war with the truth that he knew, but the lies that the enemy uses to distract, dissuade, and discourage us. And that's true of us too. When we have partial truth, that leads us into places that uh, God would not have us to go. When we think about the cults, and sometimes we really jump all over cults uh, as Christians. But in some ways, I pity them. I feel very bad for them because they have half-truth. But that half-truth is not the whole truth. And it has led them down a road that doesn't take them to the cross, but away from it. And Apollos was a man in a similar situation. He knew half of the truth. So there was this cosmic tug of war on this man until, until he met some believers who more adequately taught him and shared with him what the truth was. And I will say, for each one of us in this room, we've had that experience if we know Jesus Christ. Not one of us come in to this room with full knowledge. Not one of us was born with knowledge that Jesus is the Son of God. No, that information was passed along to us. The same thing was true of Apollos. But to get to the truth, he had to overcome those lies. And I want to talk to you about those half-truths and outright lies. And the first one I want to talk to you about is knowing that Jesus, or knowing who, or knowing about Jesus, is the same as knowing Jesus. Look at verse 24. It says, Meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus. He was a learned man with thorough knowledge of the Scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only of the baptism of John. Paul has this half truth. And, and it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, our, our desire to be connected. Every one of us, as we talked about last week, has this desire that God has placed in us according to Ecclesiastes chapter 3. And we have this desire to connect with eternity. God has placed eternity in our hearts. So we have this desire to be connected, yet he had a faulty connection. He only knew half the story. And it reminds me of our culture today. We are more connected in a lot of ways, but more disconnected than ever before. I think about my Facebook. 
some of you guys probably don't know what Facebook is. Facebook is an internet, uh, social media where you can connect with friends and family who live all over the world. Um, I post sermons on there, uh, I talk to friends on there. There's people in Saudi Arabia that watch uh, my sermons that I preach here because I post them on Facebook. So uh, that's kind of a picture of what Facebook is. But I was looking at my friends on Facebook this week. I have like 600 friends on Facebook. And as I scroll down the names, and there's a picture of each of them uh, next to each name, I thought to myself, <clears throat> I literally know nothing about a lot of these people. I know their name. I might have met them before. But to be a friend, uh, I'm not so sure. Because we, we talk about this desire to be connected. And Facebook is a great medium to connect with people. But we confuse connection with actual friendship. And, uh, and I think we do the same thing uh, spiritually. Uh, we buy into this half-truth that knowing about Jesus is the same as knowing Him personally. It's because we've bought into the lie of earthly education is the highest priority in the church. Memorizing facts, being the quickest in your sword drill, having the, the, the gold sticker in VBS because I've memorized the most verses means that I know Jesus Christ. But I can know a lot about Jesus and not know Him at all. Just like I can watch Fox News and know a lot about Bill O'Reilly. But I can't honestly say he's my friend. I can know a lot about him. But if somebody would ask, Bill O'Reilly, do you know Mike? Friends, there's no connection. I know facts about him, but what about Jesus? Do you know facts about Jesus? I bet if we gave a quiz today, most of you would pass. Where was Jesus born? You can tell me that. Where did Jesus minister? What are some of the miracles that he performed? What did he say that you had to do to gain eternal life? What did he do on your behalf? You could answer all of those questions, but so could. Atheists who stand opposed to the gospel of Jesus. See, the issue is not earthly education. Apollos knew the scriptures. He's talking about the Old Testament. Apollos knew the Old Testament. And the Old Testament pointed to one man and one man only, the Lord Jesus Christ. I would argue every page of the Old Testament points us to the Lord Jesus Christ. And he was pointed to Jesus his whole life. And then he heard about John the Baptist proclaiming that this is the Messiah. And he went out and he told everybody. But that's all he knew. He knew nothing of Jesus' atoning death. He knew nothing of the resurrection. He knew nothing of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And I think in some ways we have bought into this half-truth. If I know facts about Jesus, that's just like knowing them. And that couldn't be further from the case because the scripture tells us in James chapter 1 verse 22 and 23 it says, Do not be just hearers of the word, but be doers of it. Because if you are just a hearer, you deceive yourself. This is not an intellectual exercise only. God's not concerned about what you can uh, regurgitate about Him. He's concerned about your heart. Is your heart near to Him? That's what the scripture calls for. It is a call for earthly education. It calls for heavenly adoration. I think of David in Psalm chapter 27. And he says, uh, I'll just read it because I want to butcher it. <clears throat> It says in verse 4, One thing I ask of the Lord, and this is what I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all of the days of my life, and that I may gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and seek Him in His temple. You see, David was not like, I, I want to win Bible trivia. He's like, Lord, I just want to be close to you. My desire is you and you alone. I want to, I want to press into you. I want to, all I want. You can take everything that this world has to offer. And David had it all. He said, I'll 
give it all up if I could just be near to you. Is that your heart's desire this morning? 